daughter Amelia turned 16. The day after her birthday, I took her to the local registry of motor vehicles to apply for her learner's permit. She passed the written test, submitted the required documents, and received a half sheet of paper granting her permission to operate a car. As long as a licensed driver over 18 accompanies her in the passenger seat. For the past four months, I have been the occupant of that passenger seat. Amelia is my oldest, and this has been my first experience teaching a teenager to drive. It was harrowing at first. On that first day, Amelia was frightened, uncertain, and completely devoid of even basic driving skills. We had to begin at the very beginning, finding the ignition, inserting the key and turning it, accelerating, braking, steering, turning, stopping, signaling. Amelia is at a threshold, and in the cultural context where we live, it is an important one. We live in an outlying Boston suburb in southeastern Massachusetts, and unfortunately, it can claim many of the problems of suburban sprawl, including a dearth of public transportation, limited pedestrian access, and a disproportionate dependence on cars. For Amelia to gain independence from us, her parents, to be able to get where she wants and needs to go when she wants and needs to on her own, she will need to drive. To learn to drive is to be on the threshold of autonomy and a much more far-reaching mobility than Amelia has ever known. But to cross that threshold, Amelia has needed to practice a lot. For the first month, our drives were full of lurches and gasps, near misses and lots of hand wringing on my part. During those early lessons, I was vigilant with my eyes fixed on the road, on the lookout for hazards, barking out a constant stream of instructions. But recently, I noticed that I have relaxed some. As Amelia practices and grows more skilled and confident at the wheel, my vigilance has decreased. I sometimes even find my thoughts drifting from the road in front of me as she almost seamlessly transports us to our destination. Witnessing Amelia master a new and important skill has reminded me of other times when she has arrived at a threshold and set to work practicing. From her earliest days, Amelia has been really good at learning new things, at overcoming fear, failure, and frustration through practice, and more practice. It's one of the qualities I most admire in her, that willingness to persist at learning new things. The first time I observed this quality in her, she was just a few months old, and she was on a threshold of sorts, that a first threshold of mobility. Even before she learned to crawl, Amelia learned to roll. Over and over again, while lying on her back, she would jerk her right shoulder in an upward motion in an effort to turn her body over. At first we thought she just wanted to lie on her tummy, but soon after she mastered the single flip, she started practicing a kind of reverse motion with the other shoulder. And then before long, she was rolling clear across the living room floor. She didn't roll by accident, she rolled to move. When it came to crawling, she practiced just as hard and a few months later, the same with speech. Over and over again, she worked on her consonant sounds with a surprising level of discipline. K, 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 k. As she grows up, Amelia continues to bring that same quality of persistence whenever she is on a threshold of learning or becoming. As a student, an artist, a friend, a musician, and an athlete, I am often in awe of her. Perhaps because I myself have struggled so much with persistence. Growing up, I had a hard time being new at things. If a skill or activity didn't come naturally, I shied away from it. I started and promptly stopped so many things. Violin and clarinet lessons, ballet, ice skating, all types of sports. If I wasn't good at something at first, I just thought I wasn't cut out for it. 
I don't know why, but it didn't occur to me that with practice, I might get better, especially if it was something I really wanted to do or to be. Even when I found my niche, like academics, I often slammed on the brakes as soon as the going got really tough. From Amelia, I've realized how much I sold myself short. I think I'm not alone. Maybe some of you can relate. Especially in adulthood, we get messages that our time for learning has passed. A few years ago, when I was a lay leader in my home church, after I had preached a good sermon, one of the congregants shrugged her shoulders and said, too bad you missed your calling. Except I didn't, because here I am. From Amelia, I have learned that we can give ourselves our own learner's permits, and it doesn't matter how old we are. James Luther Adams, one of the preeminent Unitarian humanists, theologians, and social reformers, famously shared the story of how he acquired a violin teacher in his middle age and practiced for two hours every day. For me, being in seminary and ministerial formation has been like having a learner's permit. I have permission to learn, to lurch and to stumble and to start again and again as I grow in skill and confidence. I have teachers, supervisors, mentors to offer instruction and guidance, and most of them don't bark like I do from the passenger seat. Given how much the world is changing right now, I think we all need learner's permits. With the climate in crisis and our understanding of the dynamics of oppression and injustice evolving, we need to learn new skills for engaging in our world and being in relationship with each other. We, learn, we need to learn how to get places in new and more sustainable ways. We need to learn how to communicate effectively and compassionately with emerging technologies. We need to learn how to distribute the planet's resources more equitably and sustainably. Our world needs people who are good at learning, people who persist in practicing new skills. Two years ago, Amelia gave up the violin after six years of study not because she thought she was unfit for it, but because she wanted to give her time and energy to other endeavors, she may pick it up again. In the meantime, it's sitting on a shelf in our living room. When I was eight, I quit my violin lessons after a few short months, and I've always regretted it. I've been toying with the idea of borrowing Amelia's violin. I may just take it out of the case, find myself a teacher, I'm not sure if I can spare two hours a day, but maybe 30 minutes. How about you? What new thing do you want to learn? I encourage you to give yourself a learner's permit.